my name is Father Richard Estrada. I'm the, uh, an associate pastor here at Our Lady Queen of Angels, La Placita Catholic Church, on a Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, about uh, five blocks from where we're at right now. Ms. Um, uh, Ariano uh, was apprehended by the ICE that brought us together, brought all the immigrant rights uh, groups together and joining the, uh, the religious uh, groups. So I want to welcome you today. Religious and spiritual leaders join immigrant rights groups, organized labor, and community activists to announce that on Saturday, August the 25th, starting at noon, there will be a massive march in Los Angeles. The purpose of this massive march, which will be peaceful, is to protect the bond of love between mother and her child. We, the people, want Congress to act now to stop separating families, stop the torture of four million U.S. citizen children, Stop the raids and deportation. Stop the no match sanctions. And stop the hatred. We call upon mothers and their children to join us in solidarity at this peaceful march. We ask them and the public to come and show your solidarity with Elvira Arellano and millions of mo mothers like her who do not want to be separated from their children. Hoy, las comunidades religiosas se unen con los grupos de migrantes, con los grupos de labor y los activistas de la comunidad. How can we continue to support the laws that actually uh, tear families apart, that tear apart a mother from a son? And what's happening to Elvira Arellano is happening to millions of people in this country. These laws put people in the hands of abusive employers. There are people currently who are in bondage. So when, we, when you talk about people breaking the law, what we're saying is that these laws are evil and that every single person is united together to fight those laws, to change those laws so that they're humane, so that they are fair, and so that they bring some sanity to this country. And it's not just going to help immigrants, it's going to help us all. So that's why we're here together and we're all saying to you, this just doesn't affect immigrant communities, it, it affects all of us. So let's work together to make some real change. And Vida is just demonstrating how absolutely insane the system is, and that's why she matters so much to us. Next to speak about, um, about this particular situation and about Elvira and how she finds herself is Gloria Saucedo from Hermandad Mexicana who just came back from Tijuana and also Angela Zambrano uh, with uh, NELA, the National Alliance of Latin American Caribbean Communities, um, to speak about why Elvira is so important to us. Saucedo de Hermandad Mexicana, acabo de regresar de Tijuana, estuvimos ayer con, uh, con Elvira Arellano y el mensaje que ella quiere mandar es ese amor que ella siente para su hijo lo está sacrificando por el amor de todas las madres que están aquí en la misma situación de ella. El mensaje que ella quiere decir es que se quede en Tijuana, va a seguir luchando. Tenemos una conferencia de prensa el jueves con organizaciones de San Diego, de Tijuana y de Los Ángeles para apoyar el paro que viene el 12 de septiembre. Es muy importante que todos sigamos luchando. Una cosa muy importante que no, no nos hemos dado cuenta, ella estuvo encerrada por un año en un santuario y, a, y el, ayer en la mañana no la encontrábamos, decíamos, pues ¿dónde anda Elvira? Ella andaba de compras, andaba comprando una pasta de dientes, cosa que fue porque tenía más de un año que ella no podía hacer sus compras. Ella es una mujer muy importante, es una mujer muy valiente, que todo lo que ella quiere es que siga la lucha, su hijo se va a quedar en Estados Unidos, 
para que continuemos, ella de México y ella de Estados Unidos, la lucha por esos 12 millones de personas, por esas 600 mil padres de familia que están afectados, por esos 4 millones de niños ciudadanos americanos, que si no tenemos una ley más adecuada que mantenga a las familias, van a ser separadas. Y una cosa es muy importante, es un mensaje a nuestra comunidad, a esas 600 mil personas, que si no luchamos este sábado a las 12 del día, así como Elvira individualmente fue deportada, cada uno de ellos va a ser deportado si no se une y lucha por sus derechos. Gracias. Gloria Saucedo from the Madame Gitana just came back uh, meeting with um, Elvira Arellano and Elvira Arellano is sending a message to all of us that her sacrifice not to be in vain because she will continue from the other side of the border to fight for what is just, for what is fair, for the rights of the 600,000 children like Saulito, her son, find themselves in the same situation. So the, uh, she sends a message to um, continue the struggle and for everyone to come out next Saturday at noon to send a strong message to President Bush and to Congress. Hace dos días, comunidades enteras, Es una vergüenza que el gobierno de Estados Unidos persiga a mujeres, madres de familia, las arreste y las deporte por trabajar sin autorización. ¿Desde cuándo el trabajo honrado es un crimen? Es una vergüenza que el gobierno de Estados Unidos persiga a trabajadores que si no fuera por las leyes quebrantadas estarían trabajando sin miedo a ser deportados. Estarían trabajando. Beginning on Olympic and um, Broadway. Uh, we will have Javier Rodriguez and also uh, Father Luis Nieto. And then after that, we're going to have uh, individuals speak about the different demands um, and specifics on that. Okay. I am Javier Rodriguez and I am with the March 25 Coalition and I would like to applaud all of us uh, who have come together by the call of Elvira Arellano, her sacrifice, as she says clearly, is for the benefit of the people and to be able to rise once again as we did last year for a just immigration relief. For the sanctuary movement, for all the churches, just like it happened during the days of slavery, during the days of apartheid in, in South Africa. The march is at 12 noon, 12 noon, Saturday the 25th and we believe that if we are successful, successful in moving, moving our community, our communities, we will galvanize the country as Elvira wishes. So, Father Nieto. Buenos días, mi nombre es Luis Ángel Nieto. Pastor asociado de la parroquia de la Sagrada Familia en Wilmington. Desde aquí nuestro agradecimiento a la señora Elvira Arellano. Hoy somos más fuertes que ayer. Hoy somos conscientes de que todos somos Elvira. Gracias a su valentía ha regresado la unidad a Los Ángeles. Hoy, después de la violencia a la que fue sometida, Recordemos que necesitaron 15 orangutanes, elementos de seguridad para arrestar a una madre de familia. Gracias a eso, iniciamos un nuevo proceso. Hoy estamos unidos, no solo en el fondo, sino en la forma. Hoy, a ejemplo de Elvira Arellano, 
Desafiamos la hipocresía de un sistema que nos ve solo como mano de obra barata. Desafiamos la inmoralidad y el salvajismo de la separación de familias. Desafiamos a un sistema que viola sistemáticamente los derechos humanos. Desafiamos la estupidez y la incapacidad de quienes nos representan y quienes no supieron estar a la altura de sus propias propuestas. Nosotros hemos hecho lo correcto, nosotros hemos hecho lo sensato y ellos no supieron estar a la altura. Estamos aquí. Uh, and I work with the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium, NACASEC, based here in LA. For us, um, the case of Elvira, Elvira and Arellano, we want to extend our deepest and most heartfelt sympathies to her family, um, to her, and to the communities um, that are working with her. We are also here today to let her know that she is not alone, that the Asian Pacific American communities are also behind her in wanting to see, first of all, we want to see her family together. We also want to see the millions of families that are being separated by our broken immigration laws together soon. Uh, two years ago, we worked with a 15-year-old U.S.-born citizen named Andrew Jung. He woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning to see ICE and the Toledo police arrest his mother and then for four months follow a schizophrenic path dictated by ICE where they moved his mother from one detention center to another detention center. And after six months, the mother decided, you know, I can't take this anymore. Physically, emotionally, mentally, I'm exhausted. And she voluntarily deported, uh, voluntarily uh, decided to go back to South Korea. Two years later, this morning, he went back, he went to South Korea as a US born citizen, because he's still not with his mother yet. It has been two years since he has been separated from his parents, his father also decided to go back to Korea with the mother. Um, and this morning he decided, as, as a 17 year old, I need to be with my parents. And he's going to spend the next year in South Korea with his parents. He's, um, you know, to completely disrupting his own studies here in the United States to do that. Why do I share this story today? I share this story today because what we see here is that if what happened to Alvira Arellano is, is, what is what's been happening before. And with this current anti-immigrant sentiment, will continue to happen. Raids will continue to happen. Families will continue to be separated. And what do we need to do? We need to be out there on Saturday. We need to show our strength. We need to show our anger. We need to channel that anger into something positive and constructive. What I want to what I want to say today here is for you as television viewers, here as you know, people who read the media. Thank God there are people who are you know reading the news that you guys need to be out here too because this issue is not just affecting immigrant communities. We are seeing how this is impacting those who are born here in the United States. When you are, pulled, you know, for some of us who may not necessarily be immigrants, i.e. born in another country, but as U.S. born citizens, as those perceived to be immigrants, how I, I'm very concerned, and Nagasek is also very concerned, and I'm sure all of our organizations here are concerned about how the anti-immigrant sentiment will also be affecting us as well. And, um, I want to end by, um, by once again saying family unity, workers' rights, legalization, protection of due process. These are all the basic, these are the fundamental principles that we have been fighting for for the past God knows how many years now. Of for comprehensive and just immigration reform. Thank you. Uh, move that mic back. We need you guys talking into our mics, not that one. Okay. That sounds terrible. Thank you. That should be a lot better. That Hello, my name is Karen Berrigan. I am a social worker, an advocate for family rights. And I want to ask the question. Where are the nation's values for family unity? We are breaking families. And a dramatic example happened on Sunday when Elvira Arellano was detained and separated from her son. 
when I heard the news, I was devastated. I called everybody and I went out to the vigil. <laughs> Everyone who, fa who values family unity come out and march for families together. This Saturday, August 25th at 12 noon, Olympic and Broadway downtown. Can we ask you a few questions for those of us that have 11 o'clock deadlines? Okay, we're almost done. Can you leave that mic there, please? My name is Victor Naro, and a follower from the, uh, I'm from the UCLA Labor Center. Um, I stand here on behalf of the labor movement uh, in support of uh, the, the march this Saturday. Uh, one of the, uh, about two weeks ago, the Department of Homeland Security along with the Bush administration, issued some regulations that are designed to punish immigrants and immigrant workers. One of the harshest measures was the uh, use of Social Security no match letters, which up to now has been nothing more than a notification letter. And, and the idea is for Homeland Security not to use this letter to further uh, have a presence in the workplace and punish immigrant workers. This, this new policy will lead to nothing more than discrimination and exploitation, not just of immigrant workers, but of all workers. When you exploit immigrant workers, when you discriminate against immigrant workers, you are actually punishing all workers in this country. That's why we say no to the use of the no match letter as an enforcement measure, and no to the uh, Department of Homeland Security regulations. Thank you. Your name, one more time. Victor Naro, N-A-R-R-O, from the UCLA Labor Center. Español, por favor. Hace dos semanas que el Departamento de Seguridad Nacional y el Presidente George Bush ellos uh, promovieron uh, nuevas pólizas que uh, son destinadas para, uh, para castigar a los trabajadores inmigrantes aquí en este país. Quieren utilizar la carta de, que manda uh, uh, el Departamento de Seguridad Social para notificar cuando no corresponde el nombre con el, el número. Ellos quieren utilizar esa carta para, para castigar y oprimir a los trabajadores inmigrantes. Y, y el momento laboral está... Uh, en solidaridad con el movimiento de uh, derechos de inmigrantes, porque nosotros sabemos que cuando castigamos, cuando exportamos a trabajadores de inmigrantes aquí en ese país, estamos exportando a todos los trabajadores. Entonces estamos en solidaridad en uh, el movimiento laboral con todas las administraciones aquí para, para uh, la gran marcha de ese sábado. Gracias. I'm Father Giovanni Bizzotto. I'm Italian, I'm European, I'm an America. And I grew up in a family of six I'm the third of six children. And family for me is the basic, natural, fundamental place where we all become a person. And I'm here as a, lig a religious leader, really, to call upon our leaders, really to protect family. If a family is the backbone of our society, how can we continue tolerating these laws that are really separating family. What happened here Sunday for me is outrageous, it's beyond comprehensive, I don't get it. I'm here today with all the other leaders, as a church person, as a leader, as a human being, really asking that this can be stopped. It's stopped now, and that Elvira continue, who is the strong person who inspired many of us, we, I'm here saying our legacy will continue. We continue fighting for uh, a new immigration reform. I'm here also as a sanctuary person, supporting the sanctuary person who are here in Los Angeles, Liliana, Juan, Jose, Yolanda, who are at present time separated from the children, the family members, asking the, our government to respect the sanctuary, respect these people, and really take action. I'm here to challenge our legislators really to give what we've been asking for months and months and years in this country. Very briefly in Espanol. D.C. demanding we deal with immigration reform from Washington, D.C. And, and you have been effective in the last few years, especially talking about separation of families. And now, what I don't understand is you're going to put this woman, Miss Ariano, up as a role model on Saturday. A woman, whether you want to sugarcoat it or not, has broken a number of laws, especially given our nation's climate, has broken laws that are certainly going to be seen as negative to our nation's lawmakers. Don't you think by what you're doing you could be actually taking a step in the right, the wrong direction? Because she is going to not be positively viewed by many people in Washington, D.C., the people that you are asking to make changes. Um, 
fundamentally, this is what we're trying to change. The perception that what she has done is actually a criminal action. What she has done is what millions of workers are doing in this country, whether you want to believe it or not. Workers in this country are working with false documents. They are working with, the, this is the manner in which they work. How do you think Los Angeles operates? How is it that people get jobs in the cleaning industry? How is it that they get jobs in the garment industry? Fundamentally, that is what we're trying to change. That we want to go to a place where laws are fair, they make sense, and they're respected. That's where we want to go. And Vida Arellano, what she has done, just exemplifies what a person has to go through in order to survive. So from our perspective, she's the perfect example to demonstrate how broken the system is and why we need to fix it. In Vida Arellano has done what millions of undocumented workers want to do, speak out, show their faces, come out of the shadows. That's what she has done with a lot of courage, and she is our Rosa Parks. In this new civil rights movement, she is our Rosa Parks. She was arrested on her route to Washington, D.C. She intended to go to Washington, D.C. on September the 12th. She openly spoke at different churches to demand not only justice. My name is Carlos Montes. I'm a member of Latinos Against War, which is part of the March 25th coalition. So Carlos Montes, Latinos Contra la Guerra. Somos parte de la coalición 25 de marzo. I've been asked before I go to your question to answer your question in Spanish. Um, superar toda esa economía que nuestro propio país no nos ha dado, pero que nosotros no venimos a robarle absolutamente a nadie. Y hoy estoy muy contento y orgulloso de que Elvira haya obtenido este problema, porque a base de eso, si ustedes se dan cuenta, estamos unidas la mayoría de todas las organizaciones que iniciamos una primera marcha hace un año o hace dos años. Hoy volvemos a reunirnos y volvemos a hacer esa fuerza. Y el 12 de, el día sábado de este mes, Vamos a reunir a todas esas comunidades, los invitamos a que ya salgan de la luz, invitamos a los patrones a que dejen salir a su gente, porque ellos son los primeros afectados, porque les van a quitar a toda la comunidad ilegal que está trabajando con ellos. Hagan unidad con nosotros y estamos unidos en un solo grupo. Gracias.